So hello everyone. Uh, thank you very much for being here for the showcase. Uh, so this is the agenda we planned for today. So let me quickly begin with an introduction, which is the purpose of the showcase. So the idea of this showcase is to present the complete NTB functionality and then take a look at all the features that we've built until now. And for this, what we've decided is that we'll take the help of something called as user personas. And uh, for each of these user personas, uh, we'll be looking at the activities or the user flows that they would perform when they use the NTB system. And uh, following this, we would take up any questions that the members would on the call would have. So if that's clear, I'll move ahead. And uh, first, let us look at um, what do we mean by user personas? So user personas are basically representation of the actual users of a system. And uh, typically, each persona is actually associated with uh, some goals, some capabilities and behavior. And to achieve those goals, they would perform some tasks in the system. So by using these user personas, what we are actually doing is that we're putting ourselves in the shoes of the users and see how the system is used. And this basically helps us to uh, empathize with the users and better address their needs. So uh, in the case of NTB, uh, we have arrived uh, at a few personas after discussions with uh, some members of the consortium. Uh, what we've tried is to keep them as general as possible to all the implementations, though it might vary from site to site. So also we want to call out that these users are just representative of the actual users and the main purpose is just to highlight how they, how they use the system. So uh, from our understanding, we've uh, listed out four main personas. So that the first one being the field user or the data entry person, second being a study coordinator or a research assistant, third being a doctor and fourth being an implementer. Uh, so let us first uh, look at our uh, first persona, which is Mariam. So Mariam is a field user. Uh, so if I'm Mariam, uh, I'm 34 years old, uh, living in Yerevan, Armenia, and I've been working with this organization for the past few years. And uh, basically, my primary goal would be to record patient information and clinical data. And it takes me around two hours to enter a month's data for a single patient. And my main aim would be to enter data as easily and as accurately as possible. And uh, in, as far as my capabilities are concerned, I'm fairly comfortable with computer and uh, data entry, though I'm quite new to Bumley. And typically, I would use the system to enter patient data, to edit patient data, and at times, I also generate reports. So that's an introduction to my persona. Moving ahead, uh, so this is what I would do in an NTB system. I would come, I would log into the system, enroll the patients into treatments, enter some data into the forms, uh, have a look at the patient summary, and then log out. So uh, let me see how, that I, how I would do that in the NTB system. So uh, I would first log in as um, Mariam. I would enter my password and log in. Once I log in, I am taken to the screen, which is my home page. Here I see different apps. So I would be entering into the registration tab. So as Mariam today, I have three main uh, sets of forms that I have to enter data for. So uh, first set of data being for a new patient who has just enrolled into the treatment. Uh, the second set of forms being for a patient who is already in the treatment. Uh, for some time and the third set of forms being for a patient who's just entered the treatment So I would first begin with someone uh, who is just enrolled into the treatment For this I would click on this registration app here So this takes me to this uh, page here where I click on create new and Here it takes me to the registration page. So here. I'm going to create a patient called as patient one just for the sake of the showcase i would um, it would be a female aged 40 years and i register the patient once i register that successfully i am taken to this page which is the uh, treatment enrollment page if i click on this plus button here 
uh, get the option to enroll the patient into a treatment. Uh, this particular patient, I would be enrolling her into the second line TB treatment register and the date of registration being 10th of August 2016 and uh, the registration number being 46489 and I enter the appropriate registration facility here. Once I do this, I click on enroll to enroll the patient. Uh, so I get a box here which uh, if I click on second line TB treatment register, I would be taken to the patient dashboard. So this is how the patient dashboard looks. Currently since it's a new enrollment, there is no data that's present. So we would go ahead and click on this enter data button here that is present on the uh, right hand side corner. I would click on this which takes me to this new page, which is the observations tab. So here I would first begin with uh, entering the treatment initiation form. So if you see this button here uh, on the bottom, I click on it and I see a list of templates that are available. I would choose currently the treatment initiation form. I click on it and the name of this form gets added to this left panel here and the form itself opens on the right panel here. So I would scroll down the form and I would just enter the relevant information here. So I would say I am starting the treatment and I am going to give a date of 10th of August. Once I enter the basic information that's required for this form, I will save this form. Uh, so once I save this form, I get a, a confirmation message on top saying it's been saved. And also on the left panel, I see a date there along with the name of the form indicating that the uh, uh, treatment has been started on 10th August and the form has been saved. Uh, the other form that we would be filling for this patient is a baseline form. So I click on the baseline form from the template below and this gets added to my left panel and the form opens up on the right panel. So I would begin by filling the form. So this patient has uh, uh, had done the has uh, had got the baseline assessment done on 11th of uh, August, and uh, I would fill in some other relevant details about social history. And after filling those, I would move on to the next section, which is the past TB treatment where uh, if suppose uh, this patient has undergone a uh, past TB treatment say in 2012 I would enter those details here and so the patient underwent a drug susceptible treatment in 2012 which was where she was declared as cured. I would scroll down further across the form uh, to go to the past TB treatment table where I would enter more details about that past treatment say the treatment happened in 2012 and it ended in uh, the next year I would enter those details and provide the, the uh, treatment details there and say the patient was on uh, these four drugs so I will select these drugs uh, on this drug regimen table and then scroll down further and enter some past medical history the patient would have had for which I would say uh, the following details and once I am done I would save the form and I can again see that this form has been saved with the date of baseline assessment beside it. Uh, the other thing that I have to do for this patient is to upload the x-ray image that I have. So I click on the same uh, button below and I select the documents template. On the documents template, I uh, would enter the date on which the x-ray was taken. Say it was taken on the 10th of August. I enter that. I upload the image that is there in my system. Once the image is uploaded, I can see the thumbnail of the image here and I can give a uh, description here. 
once I enter it, I would save this form. So now I have uh, the documents also uploaded here. And here I also have a plus button, which is basically an indication that I can add more such forms and upload more images. I also have to uh, enter some drugs that have been prescribed to the patient. So here on top, I can see the TB drugs tab. So I will click on that. And now that takes me to this page where I can enter the drugs information. So here on the left hand side of this page, I would start doing that. Say for example, the patient has been prescribed isoniazid. I would enter uh, the dosage details the schedule, the uh, route and the date on which the patient is supposed to start. Say the patient is starting the drugs on 15th of August and I would add it. So if you see the details are now available here under the new prescription section. Uh, I would then add the next drug which is prescribed to the patient. Say it was bedaquiline. I add the relevant uh, dose details here. And say this is supposed to be started on 16th of August and I add this too. So now both are available here under new prescription. Now to save this I have to click on the save button here on top. I'll save it. So once I save it now this becomes a part of the active regimen for the patient and so we can actually see uh, both these drugs under the active uh, TB drugs tab. And if I stop any of these drugs then they would be visible under inactive TB drugs section. So once I've entered the data for this pa patient, um, I would just quickly go on to the uh, uh, patient dashboard here, which I can access through this button here. Once I click on that, uh, this should be a uh, way for me to verify whether the data that I've entered is available here. So if you see, I filled the baseline form and the treatment initiation form. So these are available here. And also I entered these two drugs. Uh, so the drugs along with their dosage details and the start date is visible to me. So now I'm sure that the data I've entered is, um, is correctly saved. So I move on to my next patient. So my next patient, uh, I would click on this icon here, which will take me to this patient records page, where I would search for my patient based on the ID or the name. So my patient has an ID of 4A5B here. So uh, when I search for it, the, I see this result and I click on this patient. So again, after that, I am taken to the um, active, I'm, uh, the, uh, sorry, the enrollment page where I would click on this and it would take me to the patient dashboard for this patient. So if you see here, if I scroll down, uh, so this treatment initiation form has already been filled for the patient and the treatment has been started on 29th Jan 2016. So this patient has been treatment has been in treatment for some time now and currently I have been asked to fill a monthly treatment completeness form for this patient. So I will go to the enter tab button here and I would uh, click on this button here to um, and uh, click on this monthly treatment completeness form. So I would be filling uh, this for a patient uh, in, in October month. So I'll choose October 2016. So this form would basically tell me uh, the adherence and the completeness rate for this patient. So I would enter this uh, details of how many ideal treatment days were there, how many non-prescribed days, how many of them were missed by the patient and how many were incomplete. Uh, so this section of the form would be calculated by the system. Uh, so we will see that once we save the form. I would go down and here is this section where we can enter the details for each of the individual TB drugs the patient is on. So currently this patient is on cycloserine and uh, levofloxacin. So let me enter those details for that. I would start with cycloserine and given these details. And similarly, I would do that for levofloxacin. Level and
and I would now save this form. Once I save this form, I can click on it once more to verify if the dotted calculations are now visible to me. So if you see here, I can see this section has been calculated by the system. I, so there's completeness rate and adherence rate. And if I scroll down below, I can see the dot rate for each of the drugs. Uh, this is for the first drug. And here I can see it for the second drug. And I also see an overall dot rate, which is an average of both these dot rates. So uh, also for this patient, I also uh, have some sample results which I've received. So I will be entering those data as well. So for this, I would be going to this bacteriology tab here where I would enter the sample results. So let me go to this bacteriology tab and this takes me to this page here. Say the sample was taken on 12th of August. And uh, we select a sputum sample. And I would enter these results, say for smear microscopy results. And I also have the results, uh, culture results. I would enter that here as well. And I also have the DST results for this patient. So I would enter that details as well here. And then once I'm sure of the data I, uh, of the data that I've entered, I would now save this form. Once I save it, I get a confirmation message as well as I can see this uh, indication here which says that uh, this sputum sample was added on 12th of August and I can view the results from here. Uh, now that I've entered the uh, data that is required for this patient, I would uh, go to the patient dashboard, verify that I have this monthly treatment completeness form here and I also have this sputum sample that I have taken on 12th of August, I would move on to the next patient. For this, again, I would click on this icon here, which will take me to the patient records tab. Now, the next patient for whom I would be entering data is, uh, is a patient whose treatment has ended and the outcome has been declared. So once I select the patient, I would go on to the dashboard. So here on the patient dashboard, um, I see that there is no outcome form as such. Uh, so I would go to the enter data section again, go to this observation page, select the outcome form from this uh, button here. And now the outcome form is available to me. Then I would enter the outcome as cured and now save this form. So now, if you see, this outcome uh, form has been saved as of today's date. So that brings us uh, to the end of uh, uh, the uh, activities that uh, Mariam as a field user would perform. So once she has completed this, she would uh, just log out of the system. So we'll move on to the next persona now, which is Garvine. Now Garvine is a 28 year old study coordinator based out of Kotaik in Armenia. So uh, his main goal is to assure quality and completeness of data. And uh, he would basically communicate this to the doctors or the program managers about whatever data that's missing from these patients. And uh, in terms of his capabilities, uh, he has a medical background and has a sound knowledge of this whole DRTB program and he has used databases prior to this uh, for analyzing medical data but he is new to BAMI. So uh, typically Garvine would use the system to import the data that comes from the PV unit. He would access the DQ dashboard, uh, the patient summary and the patient monitoring tool in order to review the completeness of data 
and also he is involved in generating reports and exports. So this is what he would do with the system. So first let us look at the uh, essay upload and the data quality dashboard part of it. So uh, Garvang uh, in this case would uh, log into the system, upload the relevant data, verify that this data has been uploaded. Following this, he would visit the DQ dashboard, which is a data quality dashboard and see uh, uh, what is the level of completeness of data. And once he's satisfied, he would log out of the system. So let us see how Garvine would use the system. So he would first come in and uh, log in, enter his password. Once he's logged in successfully, he would see this home page here. And um, and he would, what he would do is first go and look at the patient records, where basically uh, he has received one Excel file from the PV unit, which has the details of uh, serious adverse events of one particular patient. So uh, that particular patient ID is four A five B, which is the same patient as uh, Mariam had created. Uh, was entering data for. So we will access this patient. Go to the dashboard for that patient. And here when we scroll down, there is a section called as serious adverse events. Now serious, so in this we, it is seeing, we can see that uh, the patient has been reported to suffer from hypertension. And uh, this is the uh, re event that was reported. So if we click on this icon here, we are taken to this form. And we see that right now, the only information available in the system is that uh, the date on which the event occurred, the onset date, uh, the date on which it was reported, and uh, what is the term? So what is the uh, event that occurred? So rest of the form, I'll slowly scroll down. You can see currently has no data. So we would see that how the data from the PV unit would be reflected in this form. So as Garvine, I would now go and access the Excel file. If you see, this is the Excel file that has come from the um, PV unit and it has one row which uh, for this patient and apart from the uh, details of the SAE term which is being which being hypertension we also have additional results about the severity the outcome and some drug related information so what we would do now is to go back to the system uh, go to the home page click on this home icon here and from the home page, I will access this admin tab here. So this takes me to a page where I click on this option called CSV upload, where which will then take me to an SA form upload page. So here is where I would upload that Excel file that has come from the PV unit. So I upload this file, click on upload. And here I see the name of the file, the time when I uploaded it and what is the current status. So it says it's in progress. So I can refresh it to see if it is completed. So now the status it shows here as completed. So what I will now do is see if the details are reflected in the uh, patient data. So I will go back to the home page. From here I will again access the patient records search for that patient, access that patient, uh, go to the dashboard and then slowly scroll down to this section of serious adverse events and now access this form again. So here if you see it has been populated with an SA case number which was not there before. I'll scroll down further and here I can see that now I can see an essay outcome which is resolved. I can see the severity and I can also see the drug related information that has come into this form. Further, uh, if I scroll down, I also see the comorbidity which has been uh, entered is also now visible in this form.
So this is how a form upload feature would work. Okay. Uh, now that I've completed, uh, we would uh, the next task that uh, Garvine would um, do would be to check the data quality dashboard. For this, he has to again come back to the home page. And here we see an app called as data quality. So I will click on this data quality. And here I see this data, uh, a list of patients and uh, the kind of rules they are failing and uh, some notes that are available for each of these uh, rules that are failing and some action where I get an edit link where I can access and fix these inconsistencies. So currently, let's look at our patient here, which has been patient one. So so if you see this, our current patient is failing case definition, uh, which basically means that um, the in the baseline form, I had not fill, filled in the case definition. I had filled in other details, but I had not filled in case definition. So it's a data quality inconsistency. So as Garvine, I would inform this to the uh, field users who would then access this data and rectify it. Similarly, uh, this can be done for all the other patients as well. So apart from this, uh, what Garvine also does is that he also generates reports and exports. So for this, he has to choose the report given the right uh, enter, uh, uh, sorry, the right start date and the stop date. He would choose the correct format and then run the report. He would review the report and then uh, further um, uh, uh, print it or like forward it to some concerned person. And in terms of exports, uh, he would download the exports, uh, verify if it is uh, proper, and then he would uh, further um, uh, send it to a biostatistician. And then once he's done with this, he would log out of the system. So let's see how Gawain would do that. Say, uh, now he has to generate two reports. So I would go into this reports app here on the home page, which takes me to this report page. So I see a series of reports here. These are close to 21 reports that we have. So for today, uh, I have to generate an adverse events report here. So. I want to uh, generate a report where I can uh, count all the patients who have had an adverse reaction in the past one year. So let me enter this period of in 2015 and an end date as of today. Once I enter the start date and the stop date, I have to choose a format. To choose the format, I will look at the name of the report and beside the name of the report, um, I would see a preferred format which is mentioned in the brackets. So I would choose that in which in this case it is Excel and I will run the report. So if you see my report has downloaded here, I will click on it to open it. So I will just zoom in. So these are our list of patients who had an adverse event uh, reaction uh, in this past one year. So we can see all the details in terms of uh, the um, EMR ID, uh, where the date of onset, the date of reporting, uh, and some other details rela uh, related to the uh, whether if it was a possible TB drug reaction, etc. So this is how a form would be uh, run and, gener and then uh, uh, generated. Uh, the other report that I would be generating today is the um, the enrollment report here, which is a unitaid report. I'm sorry, the uh, new drug final outcome report, this one here. So I would be again running this for a period of say one year. So I will choose a day, the start date in 2015, and I will choose today's date. And here, if you see the preferred format is custom Excel, so I would choose custom Excel and I would run the report. I click on this report and here I open it. Let me zoom in. So if you see, this is a report that is generated. I can see uh, 
that a total of 59 patients were uh, who started the, who uh, were there who started uh, either bdq or dlm within this period and this is a break up of the outcomes that were reported for each of these patients so this is an example of how a custom excel report would be generated now the other task that uh, garvine would do is a ge is generation of exports so for this again i would go to the home page here and here i have the exports app here so i will click on exports so if you see here uh, this exports are run on a daily basis and uh, here i would generate the one that is uh, that is the latest and i would click on this zip file that is downloaded and open this folder so once i open this folder sorry so here uh, if i open this zip folder i can see a list of templates uh, and all the related patient information inside of that so for example if i open this baseline template csv i will be able to see a list of all the um, data that has been entered in the baseline template for each of the patients in the system and their uh, uh, respective codes once i'm satisfied with this file i would uh, save them and i would then forward it to the concerned person as garvine so that brings us to the uh, list of activities that uh, a study coordinator would perform in with ntb uh, moving on to the next persona uh we are looking at anna so anna is a doctor she is a 35 year old female living in armenia and her main role uh, would uh, her main user goal would be to actually look at patient's data and look at what is missing for each patient and based on the data that's available she has to make informed clinical decisions uh she's a very uh, experienced medical professional with sound knowledge of the drtb program and uh, she uses the system basically to review reports and to look at the patient summary and the patient monitoring tool for each of the patients so typically she would log in uh, into the system through either a desktop system or through the mobile phone uh, access the patient summary and the patient monitoring tool and then log out of the system when she is done so let us look at how she would do this i log in as anna and i would go to the patient record section from the home page i would search for a patient whom i am uh, whose review i want to do say it is this patient here i would go and uh, go to the dashboard of that patient oh uh, once i go to the dashboard of this patient i can see all the relevant data i can see the uh, pa the drugs on which the patient is on currently i can see the non tb drugs as well and i can also see the list of forms that are available what is more important to me is this patient summary here where i would be looking at uh, in detail of all the data that has been kept, uh, captured for the patient across the street across the treatment so um, for example we we can have a look at the dst results we can have a look at culture and smear results that has been captured right from the beginning of the treatment till say uh, the latest when it was recorded and how it has been uh, faring i can look at the completeness and adherence rate trends over here and uh, similarly other data and even lab results like serology and biochemistry as well and what also helps me is this patient monitoring tool here on top so i can see this patient monitoring uh, in uh, here and when i click on it i am taken to this page here so this is a very useful tool for me because it tells me what has been planned for the patient um what is uh, what is what sort of data is missing and what sort of data is available so the green color indicates the data that is present purple indicates uh, that this data has been absent and yellow means the data is yet to be collected and is planned in the future so by looking at this i can see that maybe this patient has not had a follow up since say since months two and uh, so there has been some data missing so this will help me make some decisions and as anna once i'm satisfied with the data that i have seen now i can further make my clinical decisions i would now log out as anna 
and we would move on to the next persona. So our last persona that we have here is uh, is Paul, who is an implementer. Now he is thirty years old and he has been working with uh, this organization for the past three years. Now his main goal is to ensure that there is a smooth deployment and upgrade of all the releases, and uh, he also trains the field users along with the study coordinator. Now his capabilities lie around uh, the fact that he is very comfortable with databases, operating systems, and scripting languages. and uh, he is quite comfortable bumni as well because he's already deployed it to four different locations and he uses the system to uh, upgrade uh, to new releases he makes site specific configurations and he also troubleshoots errors uh, that are raised by the field users so uh, there are a lot of things that an implementer would do with a system currently let's look at one particular action that he would do say he has to add a new treatment facility uh, here to the uh, forms so what he would do in such a case is that he would uh, log into open mrs um, create an appropriate concept add it to the uh, question and then he would verify this in the form so let us see how he would do this i log in as paul now i would go to the patient records and say i choose any one patient and here i basically want to look at the uh, treatment initiation form so my task for today is that this particular question here treatment facility at start has multiple options here i have been asked to add one more location to this list of answers here Uh, for which now i would log into open mrs i would go to the concept dictionary and first i would add a new concept uh let's say the location i'm adding is called as location 1 and i so location say location i would call it as location 1 and i would uh give the uh, relevant class and data type here and once i've done that i save the concept uh now what i have to do is access that particular question from here once i access the question i already see the list of existing answers i will just edit it and add my new concept to as one of the answers to them i click on this add button here and i add location 1 so once i add i save this the moment i save this i can go back to my uh, bum uh, ntb system here refresh this page once i refresh this page i can again now look at that form to check if the uh, location has been added we we'll slowly scroll down so if you see here now i can see location 1 has been added so this is one uh, example of how uh, paul would use the system uh paul can also do other things uh say he has to configure the patient monitoring tool to add more concepts that need to be monitored or needs to configure uh, some more tables on the dashboard that needs to be uh, visible uh, all of that also can be done by paul so uh that brings us to the end of the personas <clears throat> to summarize uh the list of features or the functionalities that are available with ntb uh these are the following so as we saw we have patient registration and enrolling into treatment and uh, we also have a number of templates that are available for each of the uh, treatments and we also have the feature of adding drugs and not uh, sorry both tb and non tb drugs so all these activities are basically data entry activities that were done by our user mariam and uh, and the next step would be to actually look at all of this data in a concise way so that is uh, was done by uh, anna our doctor using both the patient summary and the patient monitoring flow sheet 
and we also saw Garvin do some functions uh, like uploading data like the SAE forms. Uh, we saw him use the data quality dashboard to review data and we saw how he uh, generated exports and how there are a number of reports that can be generated for further analysis. So that summarizes the list of functionality.